Okay, welcome to our next flipped physics video. Um, still looking at the motion in two dimensions topic, and we're now on to the circular motions subtopic. And we're going to start off in this first video looking at centripetal acceleration. Um, just quickly, this is physics that's important for things like road design and car and tyre design. It's important for um, looking at the, the physics of launching satellites and the orbits of satellites and of solar systems and moons. And we're going to study that in some detail in the next um, gravitation and satellites topic. It's also um, important physics if you're designing things like sideshow rides. And there's probably lots of other things it's important for, but that's just to give you a taste. Okay, I'm going to spin this tennis ball above my head at a constant speed. So it's spinning around at a constant speed. The question I want to ask you is, is it accelerating? I'll let you think about that. So yes or no, is it accelerating? So before we get to the answer to that question, I'll ask you the question, is it speed changing? Hopefully you realise if it's spinning around at a constant speed, its speed isn't changing. The second question I want to ask you is, is its velocity changing? Hopefully you realise that because the direction of the ball is constantly changing, the velocity is constantly changing. If the velocity is constantly changing, then it must be an acceleration. Because acceleration is a change in velocity. So, Newton's second law tells us if it's accelerating, there must be a force being applied to the ball. So that raises two questions. What is the force? And what is the direction of the force? Let's firstly think about what is the force. The force comes from tension. As it spins, it generates tension in this string, just in the same way we could demonstrate pull or tension with this spring balance. Secondly, what is the direction of the force? Well, in a minute, in the notes, we're going to look at how we work out that force using a vector diagram. But hopefully you realise that the tension force was, is within the string, and the string is always pointed to the centre of the circle of the ball, so the centre of the orbit of the ball as it spins. So the direction of the force, and therefore the direction of the acceleration, must be towards the centre of the circle. Okay, let's consider we've got an object spinning around a circle here with radius r. And we're going to look at look at what the change in velocity between the red point here, our initial point, and the blue point, our final point, using a vector diagram. So the velocity at any point is at a direction to the tangent of the circle. So let's represent the red line here indicates our initial velocity. And the blue line here represents our final velocity. There, the speed hasn't changed, so those two lines are the same length. So that's VF. So the change in velocity is equal to VF minus VI. And we know because this is vectors, that means we've got to go delta V equals Vf 
plus minus VI. So V minus VI is in the same length but the opposite direction to V. So it's going to be parallel to V, same length. But it goes up here. So then we use our tip to tail rule and we work out that the change in velocity is that given by this green line. Sorry. So that green line there is our change in velocity. And what do we notice? Well, hopefully we notice that the change in velocity is towards the centre of the circle. Now, if the change in velocity is towards the centre of the circle, the acceleration must be towards... the centre of the circle. And if the acceleration is towards the centre of the circle, then the force causing the centripetal acceleration must also be towards the centre of the circle. Sometimes you hear this called a centrifugal force, which isn't quite correct. Um, centrifugal force is slightly different. So the correct term is the force causing centripetal acceleration, as I said, is towards the centre of the circle. So we now know about the direction of the force causing, it, causing centripetal acceleration and also obviously the centripetal acceleration, they're in the same direction, towards the centre. So the other thing we need to know about the centripetal acceleration is how do we work out the size of the centripetal acceleration. In the old days we used to have to use this vector diagram and derive this formula for the centripetal acceleration, but now it's given to us on our formula sheets and we're not going to be asked to derive that. So to work out the size or the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration, we just simply use this relationship here. A, sometimes we put a little c there to show it's centripetal, equals v squared on r. You don't have to put that c there, but sometimes it helps just to show you clearly understanding that is the centripetal acceleration. The other thing at this point, obviously this formula has the velocity in it. So how do we work out the velocity for an object moving in a circular orbit? Well, we know that velocity is displacement over time, or distance over time, I know strictly speaking that's speed, but in this case we use them a little bit interchangeably. So when we're talking about something moving in circular motion, well the distance is the distance around the edge of a circle, which we call the circumference. And the circumference is given by 2 pi r and when we're talking about something spinning or moving in a circular orbit the time for one complete orbit we call the period and we give that the symbol capital T so period is the time for one complete revolution the distance of one complete revolution is 2 pi r, which is the circumference of our circle. Okay, let's now quickly look at a um, problem using those concepts. Most of the problems around those concepts we've just looked at are fairly straightforward ones. Um, you may struggle to see this on the video, but if you look at the notes, you'll be able to see the question. I'll just quickly read the question as we go so that you can hopefully um, make sense of it. So we've got here, the diagram below shows a section 
of the path of an object moving with uniform circular motion in a clockwise direction. In part A, on the diagram above, draw and label vectors at the point P to indicate the direction of the instantaneous velocity of the object. So the direction at any instant, as we talked about before, is at a direction to the tangent to the line. So that would be our velocity. In part two, give the direction of the instantaneous acceleration of the object. So the instantaneous acceleration is always towards the center of the circle, which is about there. So that's the direction of the acceleration. So as something spins, the direction of the acceleration is always perpendicular to the direction of the velocity. And I'm going to come back to that in the next slide. Um, and then in a calculation, an object is travelling with a speed of 5 metres per second. Just writing down the information in the question. The radius of the circular path is 12 metres. Calculate the magnitude of the instantaneous acceleration of the object. So A equals V squared on R equals 5.0 squared on 12, which is equal to 2.1, what are the units for acceleration? Meters per second per second, or ms to the minus 2. So, hopefully that's fairly straightforward.